Welcome back to the Hay Meadow. I'm back by popular demand. Who would have thunk it? Not me, that's for sure. But apparently you guys wanted to see more of me. Speaking of me, my name's Hayley. I live in South Australia and I like to talk about sewing and sewing related things, particularly unboxings. However, that's not what we're doing today. Now, if you've stumbled across me before, it would only be one video that you've seen because there's only one other out there. This is number two. Now, I haven't got an unboxing, but what I am going to talk about today is how I came to sewing because I kind of stumbled onto it. Although I've come from what would be a long line of crafting sewing people, um, my aunts are all sewers, knitters, cross stitch embroidery, you name it. They're all there, crochet. Uh, my mum is a cake decorator. She, wedding cakes, um, birthday cakes, engagement cakes. That was her bag, that was her craft. Um, I can't say that I was necessarily overly crafty. I had, I tried my hand at knitting and crocheting and I can knit an excellent scarf or blanket I've done a couple of those so you know I'm right up there as long as it's not got too much involved anyway so how did I come into sewing it was a funny story my daughter and her now husband um, chose to get married as young people do they set their date for the 20th of June in 2020 that actually held a significance for them because my daughter's grandparents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary on that particular day. So that was special. She wanted to involve them in that way. Um, so that's the date they chose. Now, of course, we all know what happened in 2020. We'll get to that a bit later. But what I wanted to talk about is um, how I came into sewing and how my daughter's wedding brought me to sewing. So here in Australia, uh, June is actually winter. And my sister and I thought, oh, maybe a nice cape over the top for if it gets cool. Um, it was going to be uh, an outdoor wedding. So we decided, okay, let's try and find some capes. Um, I went and looked online. Um, if you could find them, they were exorbitantly expensive, like way too expensive. Um, so then I hit the op shops, um, the secondhand shops, um, and again, couldn't say I could really find much that I liked. Um, there were a few, but of course, you know, we're talking about op shops, they're so secondhand, not necessarily always in the best condition. And how do you wash something like that? Anyway, I digress. So, you know, we had those discussions um, and one afternoon I was, I just had YouTube on and the videos were playing and, you know, the next video and the next video. And next minute, this video pops up about making a cape. Now, my first thought was Big Brother much because... I hadn't searched how to make a cape. The thought of making something never even entered my head, to be honest. Um, but here's this video on how to make a cape. So, okay. So I watched this video and honestly, I'm thinking, really? It, there's got to be more to it than that. It cannot be that simple. I could do that. So I thought, why not? So, um, however, I didn't have a sewing machine. So I went on to Facebook Marketplace and was looking, you know, and also on Gumtree, which is a similar type of thing. Um, and I found an old, I think it's, what is it? It's an Elna Supermatic. Oh, I can't be sure what year it is. I think it might be, it's either a 50s or a 60s model. Don't quote me. Uh, I'll try and put a photo of my wonderful Elna machine um, in here. Now, it hadn't been used for many years. However, it came, everything was there. 
all of the, it's got discs that change the type of stitch that you're doing. Um, there were lots of bobbins. It was in beautiful, pristine condition. It was, I couldn't have asked for a better starter machine if I tried. I did look in Spotlight while I was there at some of the new machines, the cheaper models, but who knew if this was going to be a thing? Like, for all I knew, this was not going to work and I was never going to sew again. So I didn't want to be spending a couple of hundred dollars um, on something that I wasn't going to use. Plus, I also didn't want to break it. Um, you know, some of those machines, they were quite lightweight. Um, so I thought, no, I want something with all metal. I wanted it to be all metal. So that's what I got. To Spotlight, um, which is our big box fabric store here in Australia, or one of, um, and got some fabric. Um, and I didn't even think I'd not sewn anything. So what was a toile? Like, what was a tester? You just bought what you wanted and got on with it. So I actually bought uh, some... Um, I think it was, I think it's a wool mix. I can't be sure, um, but it is definitely, it was expensive. So it was definitely wool, um, but I got a hound's tooth. Now I thought hound's tooth is a really nice um, classic sort of print and goes with many things. Um, I didn't even know what I was going to wear to the wedding at this stage. Anyway, so I came home and I found the video that um, I had watched. Um, had a link to a pattern. I can't remember what that was, so I don't have it here. However, it was very simple. Um, so I got some butcher's paper and I made myself a kind of a pattern and got cracking. Um, so I put the binding on and I put a little clasp and voila, I had a cape. In fact, voila, I had this cape right here. So as you can see, it's a medium, um, medium hound's tooth pattern. I've used a frog clasp here. It's not sitting flat because I've got it on a hanger. Um, and then it's just bound in a cotton binding. And that was seriously all it was. Now, it looks really good, however, if I was to turn it in, you can see, and I'm sure we've all been there, when you first start binding things, you've really got no idea. So it's got this ginormous overlap of fabric there. Look, that even the fold is there. But no one was gonna see that. That was gonna be on the inside. Anyway, so that was that. I made my cape, and I can't even tell you how pleased Actually, it wasn't pleased. I was shocked and surprised that I'd actually managed to do this thing. So that was it. I was off and running. So then my sister wanted one. Um, and then my daughter wanted one. So off we went again to Spotlight. Again, I think the only person who knew what they were wearing was my daughter, Marty. Because obviously she was the bride. So we already knew. We had her dress already. But my sister... She didn't know what she was wearing either. So we went along and we knew it was going to be cool. Um, so we were looking at fabrics and didn't really know. So then we wandered into the uh, upholstery section. Now, we knew we were in the furniture type of area, but, you know, we didn't care. So we picked up this particular fabric for my sister and it's in this lovely blue i don't have her cape here with me however if i do manage to work out the whole picture here i will put a picture of it here so hers is in this really nice blue blue and black sort of um i'm not really sure what you would call it i almost want to say berber but that's a bit 80s isn't it that was couches and car seat covers and then this is the inside. So it's not lined. That's actually the inside of the fabric. And we thought that was really nice to be the inside of the cape. So that was my sister's one. And hopefully, as I said, there'll be a picture here. 
that was really nicely wound around this piece of card or core flute board. Now the next one that I made was for my daughter. Now we weren't sure about this. Um, so her colour theme that she wanted was, or had, I should say not wanted, this is what they had, was blue. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. If you can't tell, got a bit of a head cold. These things happen. It's not COVID. It's just a head cold. They still exist. Anyway, getting back to it. So my daughter was having navy um, as her one of her colours. Um, so whilst we were there, we had a look and found again in the upholstery section this absolutely beautiful, and it frays like a bugger, absolutely beautiful. It's like a silvery colour, a silvery white. It's a, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like moonlight, full moon, no clouds, silvery moon. It, that's what it reminds me of. It is beautiful. However, as I said, it frays. That's anyway. what I made hers out of. So that was fine. Now, my sister's one, um, I'm pretty sure the clasp is in like, almost like a crystal type thing. I probably shouldn't say because I can't remember. And I know my daughter's is in this absolutely beautiful um, crystal, silver and crystal as well, the clasp. Um, I bound my daughter's wedding cape in navy and I think my sister Rianne's I did in black. So once I'd finished making one for me, my sister and my daughter, I then thought, hmm, maybe I should make one as a surprise for my mum. So as I said and in my last video, I spoke about when you're learning to actually go to the op shop and see what's um, see what you can find there. Now I actually found this gorgeous, and I think this is called baby needle cord um, in this really nice purple. Um, so I picked up, I don't even remember how much, how, what the meterage was, um, but it was perfect. She was already going to wear something that um, would look nice with a purple. So there we were. Um, so we went to the wedding. Um, I have no pictures of us wearing the capes. I'm a terrible photographer. Anyway, obviously the wedding was scaled down considerably. So um, it didn't necessarily happen in the way that they had planned. However, they still wanted that date and they still managed to get that date, but not in the location that they originally chose. So we had to rearrange. Now, due to COVID and the pandemic, um, we like we wouldn't weren't able to travel necessarily. Um, weddings were down to at one stage it was five people. It would be the bride and groom, two witnesses, and then the celebrant or you know the person conducting the ceremony. Um, I think it was the week, a couple of weeks before, it went up to 10. So then, like, the kids had to actually um, make decisions about who was going to be able to attend. Unfortunately, Dylan's whole family lives in New South Wales um, on the east coast of Australia, and we all had closed borders. So his family weren't even able to attend, which was you know, horrible, it was really, but really terrible. However, we did Zoom, um, so they attended via Zoom, um, and that was great. They could at least see what was happening, uh, which was lovely. My parents actually live in the country, uh, about two and a half hours uh, northeast of Adelaide. Um, so the next thing was hunt for a venue in the town that they lived in. Now, they actually live along the Murray River. Um, so Marty and Dylan decided that they were, they might like to get married on the riverfront and then have um, photographs with some of the big river gums, which they did. Um, so that was, 
you know, we started looking uh, in their location uh, for appropriate venues. And we ended up at the local caravan park. Now, that kind of sounds really hillbilly. However, the caravan park is, is absolutely beautiful. And they have a specific area which is um, has been really nicely renovated and it's um, quite closed off as well. So we had the ceremony there. Um, it was a nice secluded area. There was an undercover um, barbecue area. So we brought food and just had the family. Now, a week out from the wedding, the guests could actually go up to 20. So we then had the next level of guests um, invited, which included um, the um, aunts and uncles, um, which was great. So we could actually have um, family there. And it was really lovely. Um, we also had a couple of close friends. However, I actually came back from the wedding with orders to make two more capes for family members. So that was what we did. That was what I did. So the next one that I made was for my ex-mother-in-law, who we have a fantastic relationship. I love my um, in-laws or ex-in-laws to death. Um, but yes, she decided that she would like one as well. And I was to surprise her with the fabric that I chose. So being that it's winter and to me, I think the easiest thing um, is something classic that, that will go with most things. Hence why I chose the hound's tooth for myself. But for her, I actually chose this lovely, and this is wool, um, check. So this is in, um, it's grey and blue. So it's like a, um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, a, it's got a blue tinge. It's sort of coming up more black on the screen. However, it is actually a, um, it's almost like a gunmetal grey, I guess you would call it. Um, and I made that one for her and she absolutely loved it. Um, I think from memory, I put the frog closure on that one as well, the same that I did on mine. Um, and she loved it. The other one was for my sister-in-law, which was a the same as the one that I made for myself. So that was great. And then my sister showed her mother-in-law the photos from the wedding. And then I made another houndstooth one because that was what she wanted also. So all up, how many did I make? Four, five, six six or seven um, capes and that was it. I was off. And up until then, I didn't even know that sewing YouTube videos were a thing. I guess I'd never been looking for them either. So it could be that. Um, however, from there, I then stumbled on this amazing uh, international community of sewing people. And as they say, the rest is history. Now, I know you think that I've forgotten, but I haven't. You're wondering what I'm wearing today. So this is uh, this is also an early make, uh, more successful than the one I wore last week. So this is actually the Sewing Revival's Fantail shirt and sweatshirt. Now, this pattern, so a Sewing Revival is actually a New Zealand company. Um, and this pattern is suitable for wovens as well as knits. So I've made this in two lots of woven and two lots of knit. Um, very simple, really great pattern. Um, now you'll see that across the front here, there's actually a band of elastic um, and that cinches it in at the waist. So I'm not going to stand up and show you this because I don't. I'm whispering again. What a weirdo. So I've made this. Um, this is probably my favourite one. So this is in a linen. Uh, again, spotlight to the rescue. Um, in a linen, in some French terry, in some sweatshirting, and also in a viscose. Um, and 
it's great. It's it's dressy enough in the woven ones that I've made. Dressy enough, I've worn both of them to work. Um, although on a casual Friday, kind of, for me, it's a little bit more casual. Um, but it's still, it's got a dressy vibe to it as far as I'm concerned. Very easy wear. Um, and I love it. And I love this print. So this is a gorgeous um, bright print. Okay, I'll do a little bit of standing up. You won't be able to see the, well, maybe you will. Maybe if I do this, you'll be able to see the elastic there. And it just comes around with a lower back. Oh, now you can see that I've put my cape on my yoga ball. It's all class here. All class. So that's it. That's how I came to sewing. And, um, yeah, I've really loved it. Uh, in fact, this weekend I'll be making... Let me just adjust that because I'm a little bit... I can probably do this now. This weekend we have book week. Um, so I'm actually about to make my grandson, who is one and goes to childcare, um, a red wiggle outfit. Now... The wiggles came about when my children were little. My daughter was absolutely addicted to the wiggles. We had we had Wiggly Wiggly Christmas on VHS and she played that video every day, sometimes multiple times a day for 18 months until the video snapped. And I took it out and I showed it and I said, it's broken and you can't get them anymore. That may not have been true. However, she bought it. And that was the only way we got rid of the Wheel of Wheel Christmas. But I have made her pay for that every year since. So every year at Christmas time, we have the Carols by Candlelight. I'm sure you all have a version of that. If it's not called that, it'll be something else. Um, it's a big community event, often um, with lots of famous performers. Um, obviously, for us, they're Australian performers. And the Wiggles are uh, a big part of that. So every year, from then until she moved out, we would sit down at Christmas time and watch Carols by Candlelight and Mum would get up and do all of the actions and sing all of the songs from Wiggly Wiggly Christmas. And she did not love it as much as you would think. Oh, well, I did. I figured if I had to, with, to endure it, she should endure it too. Anyway, I think that's it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of my um, sewing history. Actually, one thing I should say. So... This could go on for another long story. I won't do that to you. However, I actually live in my grandmother's house. My grandmother passed away in 2016. Um, much loved. She was also um, a very accomplished sewist and crafter. Um, so I live in her um, house. And my sewing room, which is actually shared with my partner, it's his office, music room, and my sewing room. Um, that room is actually her old sewing room. So one of the theories that I had when I was making the capes, perhaps I was channeling my grandmother because from not sewing at all, and you can't, Realistically, you cannot class year 10 home economic sewing, making a pencil case or a cushion or whatever it was, because I don't even remember, as practical sewing experience. I actually felt like I channel my grandmother when I'm sewing. I'm in her sewing room. Things seem to just come together. I've astounded myself 
She's obviously not helping me with the fitting department, especially in the area of pants, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, hopefully I managed to work out how to put pictures in here. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you for joining me. And uh, oh, on the unboxing department, I'm due for a Dahlia Sew Society bespoke box this coming week. So uh, stay tuned. There'll be another one of these out shortly. Enjoy your weekend. See ya. Bye.